In early Philippine history, the barangay was a complex socio-political unit which scholars have historically considered the dominant organizational pattern among the various peoples of the Philippine archipelago. These socio-political units were sometimes also referred to as barangay states, but are more properly referred to using the technical term polity rather than state, so they are usually simply called barangays. But evidence suggests a considerable degree of independence as a type of city-states, ruled by datus, rajas and lakans and sultans. Early chroniclers record that the name evolved from the term balangay, which refers to a plank boat widely used by various cultures of the Philippine archipelago prior to the arrival of European colonizers. Some barangays were well-organized independent villages, consisting of 30 to 100 households. Other barangays, most notably those in Manila, Tondo, Panay, Pangasinan, Cebu, Bohol, Butuan, Cotabato, and Sulu, were integrated into large cosmopolitan polities. Anthropologist F. Landa Jocano defines this period of the barangay state's dominance, approximately the 14th to the 16th centuries, as the barangic phase of early Philippine history. Historical barangays should not be confused with present-day Philippine barrios, which were officially renamed barangays by the Philippine Local Government Code of 1991 as a reference to historical barangays. Description Historically, the first barangays started as relatively small communities of around 30 to 100 families, with a population that varies from 100 to 500 persons. When the Spaniards came, they found communities with 20 to 30 people only. They also encountered large and prestigious principalities. The coastal villages were more accessible to trade with foreigners. These were ideal places for economic activity to develop. Business with traders from other countries also meant contact with other cultures and civilizations, such as those of Japan, Han Chinese, Indian people, and Arab people. In time, these coastal communities acquired more advanced cultures, with developed social structures, sovereign principalities, ruled by established royalties and nobilities. Smaller barangay settlements the smallest barangays were communities of around 30 to 100 households, led by a datu, or a leader with an equivalent title. This was the typical size of inland settlements by the time the Spanish colonizers arrived in the late 1500s, whereas larger, more cosmopolitan polities dominated the coasts, particularly river deltas. Barangays as apex city-states when barangays grew larger, as was the case in Manila, Tondo, the Madya as of Panay, Pangasinan, Cebu, Bohol, Butuan, Cotabato, and Sulu, among others, they took on a more complex social organization. Several barangays, consisting of households loyal to a datu, raja or sultan banded together to form larger cosmopolitan polities as an apex city-states, the rulers of these barangays would then select the most senior or most respected among them to serve as a paramount datu. These polities sometimes had other names, such as Bayan in the Tagalog regions, but since the terminology varies from case to case, scholars such as Jocano and Scott simply refer to them as larger barangays. The titles of the paramount datu also changed from case to case, including Sultan in the most Islamized areas of Mindanao, Lakan among the Tagalogs, Thimui Lobby among the Subanan, Raja in polities which traded extensively with Indonesia and Malaysia, or simply datu in some areas of Mindanao and the Visayas. Alliance groups among paramount rulers Often, these paramount datus, rajas and sultans formed ritual alliances with the leaders of nearby polities, and these alliance groups spread their political influence, but not their territorial claims, across an even larger geographic area. One prominent example was the case of the paramount rulers of Manila and Tondo, who were said to have political sway among the peoples of Bulacan and Pampanga before the arrival of the Spanish. Origins and etymology Theories, as well as local oral traditions, say that the original barangays were coastal settlements formed as a result of the migration of these Malayo-Polynesian people, who came to the archipelago, by boat from other places in Southeast Asia. Most of the ancient barangays were coastal or riverine in nature. 
This is because most of the people were relying on fishing for supply of protein and for their livelihood. They also traveled mostly by water up and down rivers, and along the coasts. Trails always followed river systems, which were also a major source of water for bathing, washing, and drinking. Social organization and stratification The barangays in some coastal places in Panay, Manila, Cebu, Jolo, and Butuan, with cosmopolitan cultures and trade relations with other countries in Asia, were already established principalities before the coming of the Spaniards. In these regions, even though the majority of these barangays were not large settlements, yet they had organized societies dominated by the same type of recognized aristocracy, with birthright claim to allegiance from followers, as those found in established principalities. The aristocratic group in these pre-colonial societies was called the Datu class. Its members were presumably the descendants of the first settlers on the land or, in the case of later arrivals, of those who were Datus at the time of migration or conquest. Some of these principalities have remained, even until the present, in unhispanized and mostly Islamized parts of the Philippines, in Mindanao. Barangays in the Visayas In more developed barangays in Visayas, e.g. Cebu, Bohol, and Panay, which were never conquered by Spain but were subjugated as vassals by means of pacts, peace treaties, and reciprocal alliances, the Datu was at the top of the social order in a SACAP or HAOP, elsewhere referred to as Barangay. This social order was divided into three classes. The members of the Tumau class, which includes the Datu, were the nobility of pure royal descent, compared by the Boxer Codex to the titled Spanish lords, Señores de Tatulo. Below the Tumau were the vassal warrior class known as the Timawa, characterized by the Jesuit priest Francisco Ignacio Alcina as the third rank of nobility, and by the conquistador Miguel de Lorca as free men, neither chiefs nor slaves. These were people of lower nobility who were required to render military service to the Datu in hunts, land wars, Mangubat or Manajeo, or sea raids, Mangahat or Magahat. Aside from this, the Timawa also paid taxes and tribute, viewwise or handog, and were sometimes called upon for agricultural labor to the Datu, though the personal vassals of the Datu may be exempt from such obligations, the latter were characterized by the Boxer Codex as knights and hidalgos. Below the Timawa were the Oropun class, commoners and slaves, who rendered services to the Tumau and Timawa for debts or favors, to maintain purity of bloodline. The Tumau usually marry only among their kind, often seeking high-ranking brides in other barangay, abducting them, or contracting Brita prices in gold, slaves and jewelry. Meanwhile, the Datu keep their marriageable daughters secluded for protection and prestige. These well-guarded and protected high-born women were called banakat, literally, veiled or swaddled, and the Datu of pure descent, at least for four generations, were called Potli na Datu or Lubus na Datu. Barangays in the Tagalog region The different type of culture prevalent in Luzon gave a less stable and more complex social structure to the pre-colonial Tagalog barangays of Manila, Pampanga and Laguna. Taking part in a more extensive commerce than those in Visayas, having the influence of Bornean political contacts, and engaging in farming wet rice for a living, the Tagalogs were described by the Spanish Augustinian friar Martin de Rada as more traders than warriors, and possessed distinct religious practices concerning Anitos and Dambanas. The more complex social structure of the Tagalogs was less stable during the arrival of the Spaniards because it was still in a process of differentiating. A Jesuit priest Francisco Colin made an attempt to give an approximate comparison of it with the Visayan social structure in the middle of the 17th century. The term Datu or Lacan, or Apo refers to the chief, but the noble class to which the Datu belonged to was known as the Magino class. Any male member of the Magino class can become a Datu by personal achievement. The term Timawa referring to freemen came into use in the social structure of the Tagalogs within just 20 years after the coming of the Spaniards. The term, however, was being incorrectly applied to former Alipan commoner and slave class who have escaped bondage by payment, favor, or flight. Moreover, the Tagalog Timawa did not have the military prominence of the Visayan Timawa. The equivalent warrior class in the Tagalog society was present only in Laguna, and they were known as the Maharlika class. At the bottom of the social hierarchy are the members of the Alipan class. There are two main subclasses of the Alipan class. 
The Alipang Namamahe who owned their own houses and served their masters by paying tribute or working on their fields were the commoners and serfs, while the Alipang Sa Jijilid who lived in their masters' houses were the servants and slaves. Hispanization Upon the arrival of the Spanish, smaller ancient barangays were combined to form towns in a resettlement process known as Reducion. The policy coerced inhabitants of several far-flung and scattered barangays to move into an centralized cabecera town, where a newly built church was situated. This allowed the Spanish government to control the movement of the indigenous population, to easily facilitate Christianization, to conduct population counts, and to collect tributes. Every barangay within a town was headed by the Cabeza de Barangay, barangay chief, who formed part of the Principalia, the elite ruling class of the municipalities of the Spanish Philippines. This position was inherited from the Datu, and came to be known as such during the Spanish regime. The Spanish monarch ruled each barangay through the Cabeza, who also collected taxes called tribute from the residents for the Spanish crown. Difference from the modern barangay The word barangay in modern use refers to the smallest administrative division in the Philippines, also known by its former Spanish adopted name, the barrio. This modern context for the use of the term barangay was adopted during the administration of President Ferdinand Marcos when he ordered the replacement of the old barrios and municipal councils. This act was eventually codified under the 1991 Local Government Code. There are a number of distinctions between the modern barangay or barrio, and the city-states and independent principalities encountered by the Spanish when they first arrived in 1521 and established relatively permanent settlements in 1574. The most glaring difference would be that the modern entity represents a geographical entity, the pre-colonial barangays represented loyalty to a particular head datu. Even during the early days of Spanish rule, it was not unusual for people living beside each other to actually belong to different barangays. They owed their loyalty to different datus. Also, while the modern barangay represents only the smallest administrative unit of government, the barangay of pre-colonial times was either independent, or belonged to what was only a loose confederation of several barangays, over which the rulers picked among themselves who would be foremost, known as the pangulo or raja. In most cases, his function was to make decisions which would involve multiple barangays, such as disputes between members of two different barangays. Internally, each datu retained his jurisdiction. References See also Balangay